It sounds like a science fiction movie, a secret government organization operating in the shadows to try to determine what's going on with the UFO phenomenon. Watch this. They came up with some type of, a, of an agreement. It was like a treaty, basically. Uh, some type of an agreement between the American government and this, what they were deeming to be an alien race. I was aware that we had made a deal that uh, we would give them infrastructure, hiding places, labs, you know, out of the, the human sight. I've been let privy to things that these people would be killed for if I named them. It was not only unethical and immoral, but that it was a program that was really connected with the demonic, uh, with satanic forces. So the Collins elite start to get this information, to start arguing to the point where, no, 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 these, these things, these beings have been summoned demonically through satanic ritual, but there's not a lot of people listening. These guys, with the resources that the U.S. government has, should have known that. They had access to people who could have told them that. So the question to ask is, why did they come up with the conclusion they did? Finally, Los Alamos called her and they said he died in a tragic accident, the details of which cannot be reviewed and the body cannot be recovered. And that's why I'm telling you, be careful how hard you push, how far you push. He has witnessed the 10-foot giants and referred to themselves as the Nephilim, said that they were preparing for an intergalactic war with God and they believed that they were going to win. This goes back to the beginning of civilization. Higher entities have been controlling and manipulating the governments of mankind. There's no evidence that this has stopped. Welcome to Skywatch TV, I'm Derek Gilbert. The topic of our conversation today is a new documentary film that explores some of this unreported, unknown uh, backstory of the UFO phenomenon since the Roswell incident in 1947. The film is Higher Entities, The Lost Tapes. And joining us for this discussion is the CEO of Skywatch TV, Tom Horn. Good to be here. And the producers of the brand new film uh, in which I am honored to play a small role. Uh, the men behind Fall Brothers Productions and Fourth Watch Films, we welcome Justin and Wes Fall back to Skywatch TV. Guys, hey, thanks, good to have you guys here. Derek, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, for people not familiar with the, uh, well, let, let's start right off the bat. Higher Entities. Uh, Justin, what, what is the film about? What's the elevator pitch? The film is getting into uh, an investigation, an on-site investigation with people who have had uh, security clearances uh, with different agencies of the government people who are very seasoned researchers who have taken the time to look into some of the more obscure things that have not really received a whole lot of, of light in the truth movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny because the more we learn, we find out that there are some nuggets that have not been touched on. And that's the thing about information. And so we, we found out some information about an alleged group uh, called the Collins Elite. And as we dug into that, we found out that there are other groups, uh, other stories by very reputable individuals that coincide with this, mm -hmm. that even though they don't know what the Collins Elite are, they've got experiences that it's, it's almost like a, a, a whole other scenario just like the Collins Elite. Okay, well, now Wes, who or what is the Collins Elite? The Collins Elite is a counterpoint group uh, within, the, it was a segment of the Department of Defense. Um, it is uh, specializing, um, well the background, the background on them is that they have a biblical basis for perceiving a lot of these um, these encounters. So you've got a working group inside the Department of Defense that was analyzing the UFO phenomenon and the possible contact with extraterrestrial life, but they were doing it through a biblical lens, from a biblical perspective? Well, they were, they were observing the things that were taking place with them, and they saw that it paralleled what the scripture says about what we would call fallen angels. So the abduction phenomenon then, they saw parallels or similarities to the accounts of demonic possession. And even more so that satanic ritual was actually mm -hmm. successful in being able to contact them. Mm -hmm. So people could summon these entities through occult type rituals. Right, and because of their, uh, because of their biblical background, um, they had issues with this. They, they, had, they you know, threw up a caution, a uh, red flag. Um, this isn't really something that we should be meddling with uh, in this aspect of, of, 
performing rituals to do it. Mm -hmm. so. One of the things that I think is interesting about this too is that we first became aware of the Collins Elite, our uh, priest friend, Ray Boshe, mm -hmm. uh, years ago, but nothing was actually like in the news. There was no official records being released that would indicate that there was any such body inside the U.S. government that actually believed mm -hmm. they needed to be careful right. putting themselves into contact with what they thought were alien entities or even the UFO phenomenon. They might be, you know, there might be uh, bridging a gap to the demonic world. And now you fast forward, though, to our current day. Look at the last year. Look at the last couple of years, even the last month, right, with uh, documents being released from the CIA and our different... Uh, you know, um, agencies within the military that have been studying some of this phenomenon. And it's not just these um, incredible videos where things in the atmosphere are doing things that, you know, our Navy pilots can't keep up with them, can't figure <laughs> it out, never seen anything like it before. They're breaking all the laws of physics. But, but now we've also seen some of those FIOLA requests, some of the documents that have been released of this other group mm -hmm. uh, that for the whole time, since we first heard of them years ago, have actually been saying you are dealing with the demonic and you need to be very, very careful. Now we have official records from our government admitting that this group uh, does exist. And of course, as soon as I saw those papers being released, I could see the Collins elite, the Collins elite. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I want to add to that, though, when we think about the government, it's all compartmentalized. And I, I think most people know that by now, that you've got different people doing different things in the government, and some are in agreement, some are not. They're, you've got even rival factions in the government. And to know that there, there are and that there have been groups um, you know, going back so many years that have had a Christian worldview in the government, uh, that gives me a little bit of hope in all of this sure. to know that there still are some people that are standing up and saying, you know what, this is demonic, uh, we should not be participating in this. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that, uh, and this, this leads to uh, something we want to make you aware of, there's, there's a five-volume DVD set of interviews not previously released, uh, produced by Skywatch TV called Project Stargate, uh, that we will tell you how to get as part of the, the package with the film Higher Entities here in just a few minutes. Um, Josh Peck and I, who co-wrote The Day the Earth Stands Still, my wife Sharon, we went down to the 70th anniversary of the Roswell event, their 70th anniversary UFO festival, and conducted some of these interviews with theologians like Dr. Michael Heiser, um, uh, with uh, Joe Jordan, who works in deliverance ministry, uh, but approaches specifically people who are dealing with the abduction phenomenon. So there are theologians out there who understand that this is a spiritual phenomenon more so than a physical phenomenon. And uh, Tom, you mentioned Ray Boucher, who is a uh, theologian himself. He's a, uh, a Lutheran pastor. He's got a doctorate mm -hmm. in um, uh, a doctor of theology and uh, apologetics and system <laughs> systematic theology. So this is, a, this is a guy who knows the Bible very well, and yet he was also a, a state director for the Mutual UFO Network. Uh, what role did Ray Boucher play in all of this, in, in bringing the Collins elite, the existence of the Collins elite, to the public's knowledge? He played a very difficult role, a cat and mouse role, if I could be so bold to say. Uh, with Ray Boucher, we, we knew we had to talk to him. We knew that he was contacted by the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. there, there were people in the, the Department of Defense that contacted yeah. him. And we should mention that, by the way, Ray is one of the interviews on the, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the film. So. No, when he got contacted, and, and he gives us full disclosure of what he experienced and what he found out uh, in his meetings with these, these men from the Department of Defense, mm -hmm. uh, he was contacted because of who he was. He was contacted because of his Christian background, mm -hmm. uh, because he has dealt with exorcisms and deliverance, right. um, and because he had a Christian, uh, a biblical worldview of the alien scenario. So here they've got somebody who's got a doctorate in theology, uh, and yet he's also interested in the UFO phenomenon. Maybe he can help us understand what we're dealing with? Was that kind of the approach? that they took when they reached out to him? It was very weird how it went down because he still... <laughs> well, you're dealing with a secret, unofficial government agency. I mean, you just yeah. imagine guys in black SUVs pulling up, you know, yeah. but, something you know, like that. They, they demanded that he meet with them in a private hotel room somewhere. Uh-huh. And, of course, that put off some red flags, but he did it. He met with them. Uh, what's interesting about, about the whole Ray Boucher connection with the Fall Brothers is that we could barely get in touch with him. I mean, you'll get a little message response here and there, and finally he agreed to do it after so many weeks. And what's really, uh, th this was just like, 
as a filmmaker. Well, he's being cautious, no doubt. He's because, being cautious, <laughs> but as a filmmaker, th- there starts to be this anxiety because there's a guy that you really need in the project. He's been on the ground with the Department of Defense. People who are involved, who witnessed satanic rituals taking place to communicate with entities, and we really needed this interview. And I, I mean, we got so close to the time we were supposed to do it, and we still don't have a definite day. We have a ballpark, we have a window, and he's finally responding, and he's like, look, I'm really sorry, and, and, and you know, we didn't know the time and the location until the day of. Right. Mm. So we had to go to the town closest to his town. We had to get a hotel, and we had to just kind of be on call mm-hmm. from Mr. Boucher before we I mean, we, we just knew we had to set up everything. And, and, and again, we had to meet him in a hotel, much like the hotel room that he met with the Department of Defense. Mm-hmm. It was kind mm-hmm. of an ironic spin on everything. But we didn't even know if he was going to do it until last minute. We, we knew that getting this hotel room was a risk because at any point he could back out. And after talking with him, I understand why he's so cautious. I mean, the guy had a private meeting with men who were in the room with these satanic rituals taking place, contacting entities. Hmm. That's hmm. a pretty big scenario to be a part of. With this topic, everybody kept saying, you need to talk to Ray. That's like the go-to guy. And even the, uh, even the radio interview that you recommended that we listened to in some of our research, that guy mentioned that it took a year to get Ray just to come to his, his audio right, radio right. show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we saw that. And, I mean, it's just, it puts more, um, it puts more, and it shows you the importance and uh, the delicacy of this topic. Yeah. It was, uh, he, he's right at the center of it because had not the government, this, this, unofficial agency reached out to him, uh, this, the, the public would not be aware of the existence of this group. Uh, and the what title they, of what the film, found. Uh, Higher Entities. Uh, Justin, what, what are higher entities? Well, I think it's important to note that uh, whatever these things may be in, in, in whoever's mind out there, everybody has a different opinion. They're appearing to be higher. They're higher pe- in the sense of more advanced. more advanced, operating in a different plane. We're dealing um, with something similar. Ascended. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. It, it kind of takes me back mentally to the idea of the ascended masters. You've got this idea uh, okay. of these. Uh, now, uh, different cultures have a different understanding of where these things originated from. Uh, but the origin points, regardless of what they state in history, uh, we, we take the view and we present the view in the film that these are of the demonic nature. Mm-hmm. You know, whether we're dealing with, uh, there's a lot of theories out there, but we take the biblical view. And with that, some people aren't going to appreciate the idea because a lot of the New Age believes that these things really are higher entities. They believe that these things really are bringing them knowledge that's good. And while, yes, while we have a lot of history of these entities bringing a lot of technology, uh, even as as you've talked about before, uh, teaching mankind how to brew beer and other things. um, (laughs) One of the essentials of civilization, according (laughs) according to the ancient Sumerians, of course. That was was one of their beliefs. But you've got these records throughout the cultures that these things are high that these things are the gods, that these things are doing good for mankind. But what we're finding out, is, let me just go back to this quote. I think th- this is a very important quote. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't have the origin point of this quote, by the way, but it's all over the place. People who follow Aleister Crowley, will, they'll always go back to this quote. Uh, and I've got it right here. Today they call them angels and demons. Tomorrow they will call them something else. Hmm. Now, Crowley's on record of saying this. He knew something. He was in communication with these higher entities or a higher entity, LAM, which we've talked sure. about previously. Uh, and at some point, we're going to have to get into the Crowley connection because had there not been a Babylon working ritual, which we, we've broken down in depth in Belly of the Beast, mm-hmm. had there not been a Babylon working ritual that took place in the desert successfully, mm-hmm. it's very likely that the Collins Elite would have never existed. Hmm. Was that one of the triggers then for the Collins Elite West? Did they look at that and say, hey, maybe this is an aspect of the UFO phenomenon we need to explore? It was. They saw that there was a shift that took place at the end of the, like, the late 40s. And then, of course, you so had that the... So that, of course, was uh, the, the spring of 47 right. with the, the, uh, the, the, the Scarlet Woman well, yeah, being for, birthed I mean, about nine months and, later. And, 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 and you've written about this in, in some of your books. Yeah, too, and they featured it, of course, in Belly of the Beast. Right. And so we won't go back through all the details, but that whole... Um, you know, they were following Aleister Crowley's teachings. He had conducted the Amalantra working, mm-hmm. which opened a portal through which Lam, the very alien, bulbous-headed looking entity, supposedly revealed itself to him and revealed facts about the future. Then, you know, his devotees, Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard, 
uh, conducted the Babylon working. They're trying to do the same thing he was doing, except they wanted to, they didn't want lamb. <laughs> you know, they wanted the whore of Babylon to become mm-hmm, incarnate. Mm-hmm. And we've we've talked about all that, the connections with Hillary Clinton, the people around her during her um, election campaign, why we believed that they believed that she was the incarnation of that unrighteous seed. Hmm. Uh, but of course, Hillary, what does she say? If I'm elected president, I will push for full disclosure of the right. alien presence. Mm-hmm. And the people around her were saying the same thing. In fact, they were sending emails back and forth John with Podesta, contact. Right, yeah. yeah, John Podesta, and we've got a friend at the Vatican who's going to join us in this private meeting they're all talking about where we're going to start pushing for full disclosure. Mm-hmm. So there definitely is something that does date back back to those rituals and and what the Collins elite or by any other name the group inside Washington that believes that at least part of the so-called alien and UFO phenomenon is connected demonically through occult rituals. Those people who do believe that, what they noticed was immediately following the Babylon working, what happens? UFOs, uh, you know, the Roswell, the, 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 Roswell, the pilot. Uh, you Kenneth know, Arnold. Uh, right. Kenneth Arnold, who yeah. was a friend of Jack Parsons. Mm-hmm. Now he's flying, you know, up in Washington and he sees these disc-shaped things skipping like he said, you know, like throwing a rock over a pond or something. Mm-hmm. But that all began immediately following those rituals. So what the Collins elite, what some of those members believe, is that indeed they did open a doorway Mm -hmm. uh, that then caused some kind of dimensional change that allowed for incursion into our reality by these higher entities. That's what they believe Mm -hmm. did happen. And that, by the way, is why they reached out to Ray Boche, because he's an exorcist, he's a theologian, but he wasn't one of the, you know, God bless us in Christianity. Mm -hmm. We do have some pretty baddie people, right, that have also clung to the whole UFO and alien. They wanted somebody who they really felt was grounded, Mm -hmm. right? Just had his feet on the ground. He's a solid theologian, and we need to talk to him. And by the way, Mm -hmm. I don't mean to dominate here, but when we were doing the the research for Exo Vaticana, I wanted to follow up. I interviewed Ray, and I interviewed some other people. I wanted to know if there was really anything real uh, about these guys. So I started making contacts into Washington. Colonel Steve Bauer, a friend of mine, longest serving advisor to the U.S. military under five presidents in American history. He said, I've never heard of them. It didn't mean anything to me because I know Majestic 12 compartmentalization. I mean, that's just part of top secret and above top secret, right? right. Mm-hmm. So uh, I contacted the former uh, mod director uh, for UFOs. Uh, Nick Pope. Uh, uh, Nick Pope. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, oh, don't doubt this at all. He said they are there, and there also is a version of them uh, in Great Britain. Hmm. This is a, uh, uh, like, again, this sounds like it's coming from a science fiction movie, and uh, obviously there are many, many television shows and programs that have come out of Hollywood that have given you the, uh, the secular version or really the occult version of this story. Uh, Josh Peck and I, in our book, The Day the Earth Stands Still, make the case that this all comes from the teachings of Crowley and uh, uh, Helena Blavatsky before him, uh, that the whole ancient aliens uh, concept is rooted in the occult, uh, because as Blavatsky thought, these ascended masters were actually living somewhere out there in space, and followers of Crowley, like uh, Kenneth Grant, believed that they were coming back, that somewhere from the vicinity of Sirius, this spirit of Set or Typhon, the god of chaos, was returning. Um, so, and there's a biblical connection there. So that you, cannot ex- you, you cannot separate this UFO phenomenon from biblical theology. It is tied, if you understand your Bible well, you understand what exactly is going on here. So it's not a surprise that there was a government agency finally looking at it and trying to analyze it from that perspective. But as you found with, uh, with Ray Boucher, who was cautious, I mean, you know, he doesn't know Skywatch TV probably, doesn't know you guys, and, and being careful about, I, I, because I'm sure there are plenty of people in the UFO community trying to reach out to him for their own purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, you did, as I understand it, have somebody you had hoped to interview who backed out at the last minute. What was that, what was that about? We had a guy, uh, Greg Renrich, and uh, Greg had uh, held multiple high-level security clearances, uh, worked inside of some of these bases, the, what we would call a dumb or a deep underground military installment, mm-hmm. uh, which there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding these underground bases because you've got levels. And certain levels, the average security clearance person, they can only go down so far. And they've got some of the highest clearance, but their elevator stops here, mm-hmm. right? You can't mm-hmm. go any further down. Um, 
After interviewing people on the Fourth Watch radio program for years, hearing stories about these these non-existent levels of these bases, uh, some some of them talk about the zoo. Uh, it's, it's an island of Dr. Moreau type scenario where mm -hmm. there, there's all types of weird chimeras being created. Which, by the way, we have we have evidence on record in the UK that they are creating chimera embryos of humans and animals. This mm -hmm. is, Parliament protects these embryos, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is old news. Uh, so the fact that we would know that there's underground bases here, um, if somebody's actually been down there and their security clearances prove that they likely could have been down there, we wanted to talk to them. And everything was set up. Uh, Chad Riley, uh, he's, uh, he co-produced the film with us. Mm -hmm. He had already done some preliminary interviews with Renrich, and everything seemed to be good. He had some amazing information he was going to drop uh, about modern-day Nephilim, mm. that that name actually is used down in the bases. Mm. He says you can't even use the name Jesus as a cuss word mm -hmm. down there. Uh, this guy's very serious. It gets him riled up, huh? It gets him riled up. It's a rule. You know, once you get down to a certain level, it's you're now dealing with a whole nother scenario. Mm -hmm. But we were getting ready to get his, his interview done, and uh, he backs out. Apparently, he and his wife were walking out on their ranch, and they begin to get really ill. So ill, instantly, that they likened it to a biological attack on them. Hmm. Now, this isn't the first time he's been under attack. Mm -hmm. He's been warned by the government people in the government, that you're done, you're not talking about anything you've experienced, you've taken an oath, you've, you've agreed to never speak of these things, yet we find you out speaking about these things. Here's a warning. You know, I liken it to the test shot fired at Reagan. That's my opinion of the situation, at least. Hmm. Uh, it was a matter of get in line or we're not going to miss next time. But on mm. top of that, they, uh, because of him coming on record with it, um, they, uh, they came to his family at gunpoint. And they threatened them, hmm. so they silenced him. Destroyed that. his family, too. Totally did. Family so, won't talk to him right now. Yep, hmm. so, that, so you had fallout to deal with on that end of it. But the biggest thing is, and, and he has come on record to say, that he's been in contact, he's worked with entities that call themselves Nephilim. And as Chad points out, um, they said that they're preparing for an intergalactic war with God, and they believe that they're going to win.